Hi, this is Nancy Rolfsma with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. Thank you very much for taking a chance on my channel and seeing what it is that we are doing today. Today we're going to work on a project that, honestly, I originally kind of sort of did it a few years ago. So for some of you, might, you might look at it and go, you know what, that looks a little bit familiar. The problem was that I did it kind of very condensed in another video too. And so I'm going to show you what I mean here. Let me go to my slides a second. So when I originally did this technique, it was actually embedded in a double wedding ring technique. So if you can get past looking at my most adorable kitty mulligan, you can see that on the inside sections of that double wedding ring, the pieces are kind of random. So I took these layers, cut them apart, similar to what we're going to do today, but yet a little bit different. What we're going to do today is what I called fractured glass. Now we're going to do this in a two-part series and the end result will be a quilt as you go project. So for some of you, you might want to make the blocks and hold off. Maybe, maybe wait and see what's coming up. For others of you, you're just going to make it as a quilt top and finish it. So the one behind me is one that I made a little while ago, and that used a bunch of um, the Australian, the Aboriginal fabrics. Really, really cool. Um, in this one, I used a gray grout. You can see the gray grout here and some fabulous, fabulous fabrics. With this, I had a fat, a fat quarter of fabric. So these squares finish 16 inches, which is one of the cool things about this project. You can make these large blocks anywhere from 10 to about, I don't know, 18 inches if you really wanted to. Um, typically, I make mine starting with maybe a 12, something like that. Word of warning, you can't do this technique. You cannot do this technique when the blocks are smaller. If you want to do blocks that are smaller, you have to hold off a little bit or look forward to when I'm doing the foundation piece fractured glass. I've had many students try. I'll be in class. I'll be like, hey, don't make it any smaller. And they're like, oh yeah, just watch me try. And they try and it doesn't work. And I know it doesn't work because I tried it myself. So speaking of some students, here is a couple that I've done with class. The one there on the left, that was an AQS class. That was fun. And the one on the right, I can't quite remember where it was that I taught that. But the idea is I love getting the students to make their blocks. And then we lay all the blocks down and see how cool it would look if everybody's blocks were in one, cool, one quilt. Obviously, you see, that would be really, really cool. Here's another one that one of my YouTube students actually made. Georgia made this one, and you can see that she actually won an award. What I'm not sure of with this one, because it's hard to tell unless you have something to measure it with, is whether or not this is the large or the small. I think it's the small, but I can't really, really confirm that. This is the first one that I did, and this is the one that you will see on the front of the book. So just a few of the blocks. Now this was done completely with my um, painted fabrics. And my painted fabrics, I can paint up to 12 by 14, but typically I'll use a 12 by 12 for this. Now in this and in the book, I tell you that you can make your original cuts four to five cuts. For this one, I made all four cuts. I'm sorry, three cuts for four pieces. So you can do three or four cuts. Um, and I like it, but I don't love it. Um, keep in mind, my son's name is Keith. And every time I look at it, I see these K's. And I just think, did I make that quilt for Keith? I, I don't recall making that quilt for Keith. So it's just an option. You can make fours and you, you can make four pieces, which is three cuts, or five pieces, which is only four cuts. And what we're going to work on today will be the five cut version. So before you actually start, I recommend, oops, that you take the fabrics you're going to use and stiffen them up. We will be making a ton of bias cuts and sewing on the bias. And anytime you do that, it's really important to stiffen up your fabrics first. My new favorite is the Magic um, Faultless, which this is what it looks like. It comes in an aerosol or the, or the spray can, um, the pump. 
I love this. And the thing I love most about it is the pump. Now, people have been asking me, well, what about Mary Ellen's Best Press? Don't you like that anymore? I do. I do like Mary Ellen's Best Press, but I do like this pump better. And I do think, depending on how you like your fabrics, super stiff or not so stiff, I'm a super stiff. I like my fabrics to be quite almost um, as stiff as paper. Um, I'm going to use the faultless. It just seems to be, for me, a better product. You need to decide which one works for you. Just FYI, I did try to make my own one time and it didn't really work out. I didn't think that that really was a thing I was going to do again. All right. So, oh, nope, not that one. Let's go to this one. So we are going to start by cutting our strips. This is going to be cutting the grout. For this quilt, oops, there's my ruler. For this particular version of the quilt, we are going to cut one inch strip. So I already squared off the one, the left hand side. Now I'm going to power cut four strips. There's one, bring it on over two and three and four. Now this is power cutting. Um, I do have lots of videos with power cutting. If you can't find one, just send me an email at quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com and I will point you to them. So here are my strips. I am using a black grunge and I got to tell you, sometimes I accidentally end up with the solid version. Sometimes I end up with the, the star version. And you know what? I'm okay. Either way makes me happy. Um, this is the original one that I did. These ones ended up about, what was it? Maybe, well, I guess I could get my ruler out and let you know. These ones ended up about 11 inches finished. And I'm pretty sure I cut them 12 inches. And these again were done with my painted fabrics. Here is the remaining block of the Aboriginal one. And this one finished 16 inches. And I did not use black. I used a gray grout on that. So let's move these out of the way. Let's move this out of the way. Here is one of the blocks that I'm making now. So on the new sample that I'm making, which I guess I could show that to you, which is right this one. This is one that I'm working on right now with these blocks that I just showed you from above. This quilt, I am combining the six inch blocks that are foundation pieced with the large blocks that are traditional piece. And I am doing this one quilt as you go. So not done with it. So you can't see the whole thing, but I am working on that. So this is what those are going to look like. And I put a lot of sparkly things on them just because it's so fun, right? Okay. So we are going to start with, and I'm going to do the four cut, which means I'm going to have five pieces of fabric. So I've got see all them sparkles I put these are my painted fabrics now keep in mind when I'm using my painted fabrics I don't have to do the spray sizing first so I have not done any spray sizing on these could if I wanted to but typically the painted fabrics have a stiffness to them already so I'm good all right so then this will be my second one I like them to be high contrast ish not super high contrast and then these ones actually are 14 inch all right. All of my painted fabrics, if you want to know more about those, again, lots and lots of different videos I have on that. I am going to cut these 11, no, 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 12 inches. Okay, I've got to remember. What size is this one? There we go. I'm going to cut them 12 inches and it'll finish about 11 and three quarters. And I am okay that my edges have a little bit of the white in them because it's the way that it works out it'll be just fine all right so take and cut on that side all right, those ones i don't keep but these ones i do and let's turn our mat trim and now i'll turn my ruler and putting that to 12 inches and what size you start with again is up to you and depends on what fabric you're using. All right, so I now have five squares that are cut 12 inches. Keep them all very, very organized. Try not to mess them up or anything. And go and grab your long ruler. And for the life of me, this is the only one I can grab. 
Um, so it's a little bigger than I need, but it'll do the job. This next step is totally up to you. How do you want to cut them? My recommendations is don't cut them so close. Let's scooch this down a little bit. So don't cut them so close that there's less than a half inch at the corner. I'm going to take it in so it's at least one inch from the corner. And you know what? I like that angle. So I'm going to make the cut. All right. Now pick up your ruler, spin your fabric, and move this out of the way. I don't want to cut through this, but I don't want to move it so far away that you can't see it. So now I'm going to make maybe a V type shape here. There's two. I'm going to rotate my mat again. And using the mat like this just kind of keeps your stacks all lined up. So if you have one, it's helpful. Now I'm going to go, I already did one long side, so I'm going to go not so long and go a little bit fatter here. Okay. One more spin. Move that out of the way. So that's cut number one, two, three, and this will be my fourth cut, and I'm going to keep them both at least an inch away from the side. Don't go making real harsh points like this. You will be very disappointed if you do. So be real cautious that you keep at least one inch from the edge, and I'm going to go just a little bit more, maybe a little bit like this. All right, my cuts are done. So now I'm going to put it back into the position it was originally. Let's get you centered there. And then I can put these all back in place. All right. Those are my cuts. I've got cut one, cut two, cut three, cut four. I typically go kind of count um, clock, clockwise around the block. Works for me. All right. The next thing we're going to do is take that first one that you cut and take one piece and put it on the bottom right there. All right. Then go to the next one. And on this one, take two pieces, one, two. And what you're doing is you are making it so that every block will have a different color. Third one, I'm going to take three fabrics, put it under. And the last one, I'm going to take four fabrics, finding my very final fabric and bringing it to the top. So now I have all five fabrics. Um, all, so you see all five, and this will create five blocks. If I take one fabric off of each, hoping I don't get too confused, you're going to see a whole nother color. Well, placement, not colors, the same exact colors, but each one will have a different color. You want to not do what I just did so that you don't get confused, because I tell you, it is not, e not easy to get, not hard to get confused, which actually gives me another little bit of word of warning. For a project like this, batiks are really, really cool, but it does lend itself to errors. When you're using a batik or a solid or a fabric that you can't tell the right or wrong side to, um, it can make this process a little bit confusing because you'll go to put it on and you might think that you're putting the right sides together, which means you might not be, and then you'll have another angle. So I recommend you do not use fabrics that look similar on the back and the front. Batiks look so cool in this project, but it does make it a little bit more complicated. So just know what you're getting into and be very, very methodical when you are working on a project if you're choosing to use a batik or a solid. All right, so back to our process. So here we have it. Now I am going to label these with a post-it note. All right, I'm going to label the center, which was technically the last piece as A. Now I'm going to go in counterclockwise order. B, C, D, and E. All right. Now it's really important that you do this and you keep yourself organized because you will be sewing A and B together. Then you'll be sewing A, B to C. 
then you'll be sewing A, B, C to D, then you'll be sewing A, B, C, D to E, all right? So the reverse order of which you did the cuts, all right? So now we're ready to go to our sewing machine, but before we do, I want to tell you that I am going to put on this, um, there it is. I'm going to be putting on the guidelines for quilters seam guides. These are my favorite thing. And if you've seen me do any videos or taken any class with me, you're going, oh yeah, that looks familiar. Nancy told us about that. All right. So we're going to go to our machine now. And at my machine, I am going to use my guidelines to help me find a really good scant quarter inch seam allowance. So this is what I do. I use my ruler. So I'm putting my ruler under my foot and I am lowering my foot so that the edge of the ruler and the foot are even here on the right hand side. Then I'm going to take my guidelines, get that thread out of the way. Whoops, it is sticky, but it won't leave any residue. There, all right, put that nice and straight. Now with this machine, I can move my needle to the right. You see my needle moving? And I am pretty sure, nope, that's too far. I wanna just go to here. And the idea here being is I want the needle to come down just to the right of that yellow. Maybe you can see it here. So that is the quarter inch seam. I want it to come just to the right and that will create my scant quarter inch seam allowance. So that is all set up. I have a 50 weight cotton thread in my machine top and bottom. Whoops, and now I am stuck on something. Oh, got stuck on my IDT. Doesn't happen very often. There, all right. Now keep in mind, I wanna work with my needle in the down position so that every time I stop, my needle goes down. And this is a FAF Viking machine. I'm sorry, a FAF sewing machine. So when the needle goes down, the presser foot lifts up, all right. So now we're going to come back to our set here. I'm gonna take my strip. And I'm going to sew this strip onto my A fabric. As I pick my A fabric up, I'm going to put it down underneath. All right. And this is something that took me a little while to kind of figure out how to keep myself straight. I'm going to use some pins here. Line that up right there. Okay. So I've got it pinned and I've just got this long strip. Now at my machine, I'm gonna sew. Lining up the edge of the fabric with the edge of my guideline. And I use my finger to help make sure that it does not go past the guideline. Okay. All the way on over. Then I'm gonna stop, spin it around, grab my leader off the back. Okay. Lift my needle and go back onto my leader, all right? So it's not quite as smooth as normally using a leader is because you can't stop right here. Now I'm gonna press this a second and then I'm gonna come back to my overhead camera. Got my iron right over here and I wanna press this toward the grout. So in my case, that would be the black fabric. All right, so I have that pressed toward the grout. And because I'm leaving this here, I'm just gonna grab another small mat so I can show you what the next step is. All right, so there's my piece with its little bit of grout on it. And now I'm gonna cut it off. I'm gonna take and line it up with the edge of the fabric and cut it off right there. I could do the same to this, but I guess I could. Yeah, let's do that one. I'll end up having two at some point that I have to cut off on the very first one. There, all right, then put it back into place. Go, all right, where does it fit? There, that's where it fits, all right. Now I'm gonna take my B piece. As I work it, I'm gonna put that post-it note underneath so I don't get distracted. And I'm gonna put this one here. Now it is pressed toward the middle. And one thing you're gonna want to try to do, I wonder if there's a way for you to see this better, is you wanna line up so that you know that you're going to get, like you don't want to take this all the way to the point there, all right? You want to have it come in a little bit on both sides. And what I'll do, okay, I gotta try and get this set here. All right, 
Here is where I think I want to place this. I will take my thumbnail and create what I think is going to be my seam allowance and then flip the fabric over and see if it actually lines up. And it does. Um, so that's how I kind of am able to judge whether or not it is lined up correctly. Keeping in mind, incorrectly is not a problem. And I'll show you what I mean by that, how we're able to trim those. All right. So now I'm going to go and sew this seam. All right. Again, being sure that I'm working with my scant quarter inch seam allowance. Jump off onto my leader and cut off. Okay. So again, now I'm going to take this and press it toward the middle. And in this case, I like to press it from the back side so I can make sure that my seams are both coming together. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. If everything has gone according to plan, these little guys are going to come together like this. Do you see what happened here? I let my seam allowance drift a little bit, so there's a little bit of a gap. Does that bother me? No, it does not. I'm just going to leave it there. I know that this is going to happen, and I'm okay with that. All right. So now I'm going to go for my next piece. I'm going to place it all back in place. This is now AB. Now it's time to add the black strip here. And I'm actually going to start it here on the AB square. And my lining up has actually turned out pretty good, so I'm not going to have to cut anything off. There will be a time that I'll have to cut something off. And you'll notice that I always leave a little bit. Now there's the salvage, so obviously I'm going to leave that there anyway. And I'm doing it with the star. Okay, sorry. Told you that sometimes I mistake this fabric and do it with the backside. But I'm going to leave a little bit at the beginning and at the end um, because those angles can be a little bit tricky. All right, so be sure that you leave yourself a little bit. Oops, don't let that seam pop up on you. And I'm going to be more cautious this time that when it gets to the end, I don't let the seam float out. Lift my needle. Whoops. Try that again. Lift my needle, press her foot. I want to sew on to my leader. There, it almost jumped away on me again. And needle down. Whoops. Okay, cut off my leader, gonna press this. This is the part, I wish I had an extra camera that I could show you the pressing too, but I don't, so you can't, all right? Here's my next piece. This is what I have just sewn on. I'm going to use my ruler, cut this strip straight with the edge of the piece and the same thing on the other side and doing this one at a time you know i am notorious for wanting to do lots and lots of chain piecing all at once i do not recommend it for this project i find everything time i try i get very very confused all right ready for our c piece I'm gonna put the c down position this next one and when i position it i'm gonna put my thumbnail there and see is that gonna be yep that's gonna be straight across although in this case I like to sew with the black on top, just cause. It's not like you have to. I just like that that way. Into my machine, off my leader, and on. Um, as you can imagine, we are gonna continue this process. I'm hoping that I get one that has a kind of weirdness to it so I can show you what you do with that. Like as if I never get a weirdness, all right? Cut that, and again, I'm gonna press that to the middle. And when I'm doing these, I do like to press it from the back side, and then I can see how everything has fit together. Keep in mind, if your seam allowance is too large, that's actually more of a problem than if your seam allowance is too small. You want, now here, that's not a too large seam allowance. That was that little tail from that last one. If your seam allowance is, I'm sorry, if your seam allowance is too large, yeah, that's right these will actually overlap in the middle. And that is not something you really want. You want it to be so they kind of meet together. All right, here we are for our next one. We're gonna sew the grout on the next piece, starting at about 
an inch or so past my strip off my leader and get here I'm hoping I put the right side of the fabric up keep that so that the seam catches and this one is a more odd angle so when I cut this I'm going to be really cautious that I don't cut it too short off onto my leader All right, this again is going to be pressed toward the black. Here we have that. So now I'm going to get out my little cutting board again. So you see the process, right? I've got just two more to go. So this one, I'm going to cut this little edge off there at the same time. There. And this one is going to be here at the actually on the outside edge. All right. So that would be, there we go. There we are. So now we're ready for D. I'm going to take my D, place him here, do my little test. Kind of, if you get that guy sticking out about a quarter of an inch when there's a point, can you see that? There. See how he's pointing out? That's usually pretty good, but I'm going to do my test of my quarter inch seam and see. Ah, he's a little bit low. So I'm going to move him up a little bit higher. It is a trial and error, and maybe I should make it so that the other side isn't right. So I can show you what you do when it's not. There we go. I think that's pretty good. That would be accidentally doing it wrong, and that's kind of hard. <laughs> Oops, I should have pinned that. I did not. There, that should be okay. Let's get these together. Up, lining that up. And don't float away from your guideline. I'm trying to go a little quicker so that you're not just watching me sew for, well, I guess an hour. Okay, now I'm gonna press this one toward the middle. There, nice and flat. Oops, not nice and flat. That, that would have been bad. There. I normally do take more time with my pressing, so that one didn't hold down. Oops. There. So this one did not hold down. Sorry about that delay on the camera. All right. Get that little guy over. I want to get back and fix this little flippy here. So here we are ready for our last strip. Now, I had hoped that I'd make more of an error so that I could show you how to fix it, but shockingly, I did not. Everything is pretty smooth. But there will be some times, and this one is just barely, but there will be some times when the fabrics don't line up. You might be sewing along, and you might have one that goes up, in, or one that goes out. This is really easy to fix. Just line up the next line that you want to sew, which is, in this case, this is my final line, and create a new straight line. So if any of these are sticking out funny, just create a new line, okay? So I was able to just trim off a smidge, giving myself a brand new straight line. Matt over there. Now I'm ready to sew the grout on this one. So I'm gonna take my strip. Do I have one long enough? I do, and I'm gonna make it with the black on top. Going to be sure that it is sticking out a little far on both sides. Okay. And you see these bias edges that I'm sewing. Keep in mind that's why I, I suggested, I didn't require, I suggested that you actually do the spray sizing first. Unless you're using your painted fabrics, which that would be super awesome. Because um, like I mentioned, the painted fabrics have a little bit of stability and structure to them already. And I'm going to make sure that this stays flat. Seam allowance. And this is my last piece. And up and onto my leader. Okay, I'm going to press this one toward the black. Oops. All right, bear with me. A little bit of a pause. 
there. All right. So now this one is pressed toward the black. I'm gonna again get, oops, I'm sorry. This one is again pressed toward the black. I have to switch that camera or else you're just gonna be staring at the machine all day long. All right, so gonna line this up with the straight edge, cut off that little tail, do the same thing over here and cut off that little tail. All right, so I am ready for my last piece in this block. So this does not take that long making each block. So I'm gonna take my E, put it underneath. There we go. Now I'm ready to put this one on. I'm gonna start it up here at the top. I'm gonna check my seam allowance, line up the edge, put my thumbnail there and see if it's going straight across and I need to lower it just a smidge. It seems like such a little thing, but doing that little thumbnail test where you place your thumbnail where the seam allowance is gonna be and then flipping it out really helps keep things much, much straighter. All right, and this will be our last one. Again, I did not pin it because I'm trying to rush, which is not good. Don't rush. Take your time. Enjoy the process. All right. Go all the way down. Oops, onto my leader. There we go. One last pressing and then we will be done with our block. From the back side. There. I'm gonna give it just a little bit more of a press this time. And I'll tell you what I really, really would do when I'm not kind of rushing for time a little bit. All right, there we go. That is my new block, my fractured glass block. Um, what I actually do at this point on the back side, because you see I kind of rushed a little bit, I will actually take and spray a little bit of spray sizing all over the back and get that all nice and flat. All right, whoops, don't mess this up. I'm gonna move this mat and show you what happens next. All right, so here's your block. Now, once you have your block, oops, I just covered up my square. There we go, I'll get another one. After you've made all your blocks and you flatten them all out, you see mine are not quite as flat as I would normally want them to be. Then you will decide what size your block is to be. So mine, I can make it 11, and three quarter inches. You lose a little bit. You would think that it would end up the exact size, but it always seems to lose a little bit because I am not quite 12 on the top and the bottom. So going down just about a quarter of an inch all the way around and centering that up. So there you go. There are the steps for making the large fractured glass. The book is available on my website, which is www.quiltingwithnancy.com. You can find the um, book there and lots of other things. There is an electronic book or a um, paper little booklet. It's not really a book in terms of being spiral bound, um, but that does have the instructions for this block and the next block to come, which will be the foundation pieced blocks for making them smaller. So I hope you enjoyed this. Give this a try. It really is pretty simple and it's always, it's kind of fun because it's just a little bit unexpected. What is it gonna turn out like? You just never know until it's done. If you have any questions, you can contact me at quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. Please do me a favor. Give it a thumbs up or um, leave a comment, that kind of idea. I do answer all the questions that come through. So I really appreciate you watching and have a great day.